Uh, it's a great uh, thing to continue where Edward left and talk about the camera. I bet all, most of you at least, uh, have done some uh, photo picture taking app or uh, grabbing from, from your photo albums or whatever. But we look at the camera, what it can do more for you than just uh, taking pictures. First of all, short one, this is me when I had hair. Uh, it's a while ago. Uh, you can see from the beer bottle that it's not the last year's version of beer. But anyway, I've been around for a while, so I've been walking through everything from Apple Lisa's to Macintosh's, uh, going through Mac OS X. Everyone knows what Rhapsody is or was. The first version before it became iOS 10, uh, Mac OS 10, and iOS, of course. And a lot of the uh, programming languages I've been looking at. So, a lot of these meetings tend to uh, discuss various kinds of frameworks, API, and, and, and you know, these APIs that we have and, and Primix that we have are very, very rich. They can do tons for us. But I like now to sort of focus into and see a framework that's been a, a, around for quite a while and that is available for everyone to just pick. And that is AV Foundation. AV Foundation is a quite nice architecture. Uh, basically, it's a Swiss army knife. You can combine stuff with inputs and outputs in various kind of ways. But I like also to put using an API or framework into some kind of context. And you sh should always ask yourself, why do I do this? Or go to your friends, go to your parents, go to your local uh, hockey club, go to your whatever in your neighborhoods, your hobbies, and look what they actually do to find out where can I get in and find a task, an opportunity for an app. So this starts with a story. I had a good friend of mine, I have tons of them, but a good friend of mine, he's an engineer from the Royal Institute of Technology, but he switched career many years ago and turned into some kind of, I don't have the really English word for that, but they are looking at wild animals, bears, wolves, they track, they count, they look at the puppies, try to figure out how they move, how they breed, etc., etc. And among these animals, uh, there are specific things that are, are, are really good and a couple of things that are really bad. For instance, inbreeding, I mean, mating between siblings or relatives is obviously not good. So the further the animal moves, the better for avoiding inbreeding. And these are the kind of animals that I uh, look at currently. They have uh, a colors for each of those with GPS transmitters, track them here and there, and see how they move. Because when they know where they are, they can see if they move within the same area, if they have their turf. And some of the species here are very, very strict to keeping their turf. So again, the issue was really, um, how do you do this? Are you sitting in the forest with a monocular and looking, or sneaking up on animals? Anyone had know how hard it is to sneak up on a wolf? Because they hear you kilometers before you even get there. They know that you are there. They are experts in getting under the radar. But what do you actually do? Um, they, as I mentioned, they have GPS colors on them, but a couple of other colleagues of him, they move around often in, in the forests and they find droppings of the animal. They take a small sample of the droppings, they take a piece of paper, a barcode sticker, put on the sample barcode, writes on the paper uh, the date where they are, 
the GPS coordinates that I often read from a separate GPS device, big chunky device, which hopefully is, called, is calibrated using the same GPS positioning standard as they want to have the reports in. There are a couple of them. And they want you the name and address of the person who did the actual findings. Put it in an envelope, put it on the mailbox, and then it, off it goes to analysis. So this sample, they can tell exactly what animal it is. And they've seen that animal moving, for instance, like a couple of miles or more, hundreds of miles. So the uh, task was really, well, is this that what you do? And imagine yourself standing in the forest, pouring rain, grabbing a piece of now wet paper, writing on something that you try to stick. You move the label, you put it on the glass sample, you collect the spillings, you, you know what I mean? So there's a lot that could be done. And the obvious thing was, well, these things that are in bold, date and place, barcode, GPS coordinates, name, address, well, I can, with the help of AV Foundation and a bit of other code, do this. So, the idea was to use some of the standard components. In this uh, example, five components that are a part of the AV Foundation architecture to do all this. Basically, it's for reading barcodes. So, with that, I like to switch to a demo. So, um, I think I spent roughly a day on the first tryout, and maybe half another day. I showed it to my friend and colleague, and he said, what? So, the app is called Bear Dropping. Um, I didn't have a better name for that. But at least what you do, you launch the app, while you're in the middle of the forest, collect the, the spillings, sorry, uh, put the label on, you scan the barcode. So let's scan the barcode. Uh, now, of course, I didn't prepare such a nice uh, example, so I brought some other things that have barcodes, and basically everything has. I can, why not? Let's see if it works. Yeah. So immediately it recognizes the EAN code here. I can save it and move on with the next sample. Look into how, which situation this is in. You rarely find a new uh, spelling every minute. So this is not a task you do within seconds. So I, I found it reasonable to leave the scene and get ready to do an, another sample. And for instance, I picked another example, and this is a box of gentlemen's eau de cologne, which I think is suitable for when you've had tracked bears. But this also have an EAN code sticking on. All right, and I did already have that in my sample app. But nevertheless, so basically storing a bunch of stuff, and I actually chose to not send it over internet immediately. I didn't require then a server, I didn't require an API, a login, an endpoint. I just shoved it into a core data database. So basically what we could do is look at all the samples I've done so far, have a look at the last one. And yeah, I have internet here, so eventually we will know we are mid-city. Or not but that's the uh, map view that isn't updated. I have Wi-Fi at least. But you know the drill. I have all the coordinates, so why don't you show exactly where it is? So you afterwards, you've been uh, tracing spillings from the bear or the wolves. You can easily sit ho home in your coach, walk through the coordinates and see where I was. So that's about that. So let's see how this is done. 
Right. Live coding. Oh, Jesus. In the end, out the end. And here it is. Live coding. I have a fairly blank Xcode project. I've done some things here. I declared two uh, IB outlets for a simple, very extremely simple. This is only a UI view at the top and a UI label at the bottom. And they have outlets. That's about it. So, first of all, I have a sheet sheet over here. We need to declare some internal variables for us to use. So, let's see. Yeah, I need to grab all this chunk. I hope you can read the code. Is it too small or big? Is it okay? Response? It's okay, yeah. Uh, but choosing a, a bigger font, as you see, uh, you may end up with a bit awkward formatting. So what I have is, as I mentioned earlier, the five components of AV Foundation. I have an AV capture session. I have a metadata output and a capture video preview. And I also uh, declare some, in this case, uh, static things, what camera I prefer, uh, and a focus point of interest. Because when you read a code, and in my case, I had a fairly large uh, preview screen, you actually set where is the focus point? Where am I expected to have the code under what point? So, Zero, half, zero, zero, five is mid, uh, horizontally, and vertically. Then the fun begins. We declare what kind of codes, in this case, barcodes, meet objects that we will be having asked for to be recognized. And we got the question before for someone here asked about the Aztec code. Yep, it's in there. So standard QR codes, which are two-dimensional codes, and the EAN codes, which are the striped ones, they are one-dimensional, and a couple of others. We we'll talk about uh, a bit later about these in details. So that was a number of internals. Let's move on and. Um, move some of the convenience routines I made here. Right. In some cases, you actually have a try catch block when you uh, ask for a request to a camera or a device, in this case, an AV capture Im device input. So you might fail with an exception that you like to actually catch because your app will otherwise crash. So this is a very convenient routine to ask for something, and if it fails, well, return at least nil. Silently and nice. And in some cases where you have a capture device or a capture device input, you need to configure autofocus, near, far, uh, various explanation parameters, then you need to lock your device. So this is a configure block, which do a lock for configuration, executes the block, and then unlocks it. That you need to do when setting properties for the camera. But we can have those and forget them. So let's move on. So what do we do when the app launches? Well. We take a block of code here inside, view will appear. First of all, I try to code often with uh, sort of easy names, although I haven't got the methods yet. So what I like to do is sort of initialize, try to find a camera that's suitable, and if that works, I configure the session uh, for that camera with a preview, a UI view, and get some other variables that we have. Sounds nice. Let's see how the find video camera works. Um, yeah, don't forget to 
also import this single row. I explain that later. So here's the find video camera code. I can put it over here. There are two methods or two ways, and, and just a heads up, if you want to target iOS 10 and later, you have to adopt to a fairly new API. And if you're targeting earlier versions of iOS, you have to move back to the older API. So they have two versions of basically the same thing. But again, uh, so I can execute the default one, just get me a, a camera, any camera, and that works. In case you have, um, that code should basically work even on uh, iPod, you know, the, the fancy version where it has a camera. But you can al also be more specific and specify a, sp a certain device type, as I had earlier, the back camera or the f front camera. And for those new iPhone 10 devices, you can also specify if the uh, telecamera should be used or the near camera, since they have two back cameras. So, uh, but you can experiment a lot with this. So, and secondly, or lastly, or not really, but almost, we have the stuff that do the configuring. Once we have the camera device, we send it to a capture session that does the, creates the capture session for the device and returns uh, a chunk of code optional. So if I fail, I just bail out with nil. If it works, and someone's calling me, sorry. Um, a tuple is returned with those uh, three uh, properties. So let's start from the easy. You have your AV capture device. You create, uh, yeah, you can read the code yourself. But you can specify, then configure the device input set, device properties, focus of interests. Like I mentioned, half of the size horizontally, vertically. Uh, adding a device input, this AV capture session that drives all. You can also add pictures if you like to have a snapshot of, I mean, a real picture at the same time as you read the barcode. It's not a picture that is taken automatically, no. You have to start it with some calling a method for that kind of uh, capture photo output. The interesting part comes further down when we create a metadata output. And it's called AV Capture Metadata Output, and you connect it to your already existing capture session. And here we set the metadata object delegate. Who is going to respond to when I found the barcode? And that's us, that's self. And we can also uh, tell this to execute on a specific background queue if we want to. Last but not least, we create an AV capture preview layer. So in order for us to actually see in a view, where are we pointing at the camera? So what's left? Well, it complains here that my, um, my view controller is not a uh, correct delegate. And that's true because I haven't pasted when I extend this view controller I do it like this. This is the delegate method that needs to exist in order for us to be a delegate that takes care and is called automatically when we discover a barcode. And here is just uh, sort of try to assemble a nice name to put in the back, uh, sorry, in the uh, label in the view that you saw in the storyboard. And I also look at the codes, the specific, if it's a barcode and yada yada, so, but let's, let's see what's happened. And hopefully, um, we will be able to run it on my phone. We can leave this up, I can even kill it so it's completely clean. Let's hit run. We have just a warning, I guess it's a Swift 4 is available warning.
Right. Running barcode on. No, what? Yeah, iPhone 7 Plus. Yeah, here, here we go. So, what's up? Uh, I do like this. You see, it's up and running. I need to close debugger session right now because to be able to show it here. So, this is what I saw. This is the app launching, having the preview of the camera, a label which is obviously not initialized properly, but again, reading stuff just works. And that's a barcode. Something more, uh, I mean, that's about it. Not m many lines of code, uh, but interesting to mention when we look at some of the code that actually digests the things that we get in our callback. And that is the barcode object. Yeah, obviously, these are mainly barcodes. But there is one interesting guy in the middle, the face. So we have a face recognizer in the app as well. And if I rotate my head, you see that it obviously discover a rotation. So no, it won't recognize your girlfriend or your worst enemy or anything like that. It will recognize a face. And it will recognize if the face looks towards there, towards there, tilts its head like that. So you have a couple of rotation degrees that you are informed about. But it's no more than that. Right. I don't know what more, what's in the slides. I've done this, trust me. So what's next? Well, actually, when I was asked by Edward to have a speech, I, I, I looked, yeah, what are I going to say? So this code is two years old plus, more than that. And when I opened it the, the other uh, week, it was Swift 2. And it's quite a job to convert that, because I had a two new Xcode version that didn't uh, could automatically do this for me. So never mind. So, but I actually did wrote another so example of how, where you can use uh, barcode readers. So, I won't take a lengthy um, chat about this. You see this anyway, I don't need to go full screen. I quit that. There's, uh, imagine yourself having a small store, or a large store anyway, and an app that does inventory for you. So the only thing you do is to walk around in shelves each, whatever, every month, or how often do you do inventory? You read stuff, you say how many, and continuously read until you're done. So, but here's another example, as, as I mentioned earlier, I chose in the uh, bear uh, app to actually uh, quit scanning after each round. Now I should continuously read, stop when I found a code, let the user enter how many, then start again. So it's a little bit different how you handle this. But here you can see also I have a slightly fancier view. It's a narrow view because they usually match the EAN codes that are on clothing and spare parts and whatever your inventory is about. And I also have the option to turn on a flash. See in the upper right corner? And this is actually not a flash. This is a torch. There's a difference between a flash, which is off, as long as you don't actually take the picture, then the flash lights up and it, the, the camera tries to do its stuff and then it, it, it takes. The torch continuously lit until you've done your thing, which is a good thing in low light conditions where you need to read the barcode. So, are there any situations where this is not a good solution? Yes, there are a few. Uh, mainly very, very tiny codes. Barcodes like are micro in size. Um, if you have ever looked on the back of your iPhone uh, box, there are three barcodes and they are really, really tiny. 
So depending on light and depending on how you play with the focus parameters, it can be a bit tricky. This app also supports uh, a tapping in view for actually, say, focus here. So it's, it's a way to fix, address this issue. Otherwise, it's fairly snappy. Now, this app I've shown you uh, is actually taking care of all kinds of barcodes. Uh, I bet it could be faster if you only minimize those you actually use, if you're interested in uh, QR codes, for instance. But again, as Edward mentioned also, what's new in iOS 11, was it? Was it iOS 11 that had this, the, where the camera app does exactly this? And if it's a URL, they actually open that URL. So if you have an HTTP URL, they would most likely open Safari. And in Edward's case, you have your own scheme, which was called something. And the iOS does only right, open it and see what happens. And the app launched and took care of the response. So that's a good one. Okay, back to the drawing board. Yeah, this is an uh, easy example of how to get on fast. Uh, a kind uh, warning that if you get hooked, you can sit there forever <laughs> fiddling with properties on the camera and play around, but please do. So I got room for Q&As. I haven't got room for Q&As, but get me later and I try to do the best. Thanks.